Folks, it finally happened. We finally got more information about Project L, the upcoming Riot Games League of Legends fighting game. We got a massive trailer that showed quite a bit of stuff and got some behind the scenes information directly from the developers on what they're going for with the game. So I thought it would be interesting and informative to go through a really deep dive. We're going to be frame by framing some stuff and we're going to be talking about every little scrap and crumb of high level detail about how we think this game is going to play and how the mechanics are going to work and some of the things that I personally think make the game look extremely exciting. I cannot overstate how pumped I am for this game. It's probably not going to come out till 2023 at the earliest. So we got a while to wait, but I am going to be waiting with bated breath and we are going to be talking about some of the reasons why and what I think makes this game look really, really promising. So let's start at the beginning here of the first stuff that they showed us. And guys, I just wanted to add real quick, you know, if you like this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you could hit the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. A majority of you are not subscribed to me who are watching this right now. So if you could subscribe, it would help me out quite a lot and it will help you get shown my videos more regularly and not rely on the whims of the algorithm. You can actually choose what you want to watch because you actually like it. So go ahead and do that. And with that out of the way, let's jump right in at the beginning of the trailer. Hey everyone, I'm Tom, executive producer at Project L. And I'm Tony, Project L's technical lead. So I saw <laughs> some amount of confusion online from people who aren't really in tune with the fighting game community. They were like, why do, <laughs> are these guys twins? Why do they have two of the same guy? <laughs> they have doppelgangers. And yes, actually Tom and Tony Cannon are very, very well known when it comes to the fighting game community. So these guys were actually co-founders of Battle by the Bay, which was an old tournament series, which kind of transitioned into Evo. So these are some of the co-founders of Evo right here. So that's a huge deal. The world's biggest fighting game tournament. Tony Cannon on the right was the inventor of GGPO, which was the first big rollback netcode solution. A lot of games like Street Fighter 2 HD Remix uses GGPO. Street Fighter 3 Third Strike Online Edition, Skullgirls, Power Rangers Battle for the Grid, lots of fighting games use GGPO and that was created by Tony Cannon. And these guys also worked on a fighting game called Rising Thunder, which was sort of like an in-progress thing, I believe, that never got fully finished, but it was released in a playable beta form. Uh, and that was when they got bought out, essentially, by Riot Games and brought onto that team so that they could bring both the knowledge of game development and the knowledge of online play and infrastructure to Riot Games so that they could make a fighting game. So that's where we are. These guys are a huge, huge deal in fighting games, if you don't already know. So that lends, in my opinion, a lot of sort of reputability behind this game and lets us know that, you know, at the end of the day, they have people who really, really know their stuff at the helm of this game. So that's one big reason to be excited, I think. And I'm Tony, Project L's technical lead. Last time we talked, I let you in on the secret that we're building a fighting game here at Riot. We showed you a brief glimpse of gameplay and said we'd be going dark for a while, but we'd share more when we're ready. Well, a lot's changed since then. Speaking of a lot changing, I've seen a decent amount of discussion about the art style. While, I mean, first first off, off, to be clear, this is not a, like a real game. You know what I mean? What they're playing here, this is what's called a vertical slice. So essentially, they made a very small subset of the game for the purposes of testing, for the purposes of finding what they want the game to be like, and for showing it and giving people an idea of sort of what their ideas are for the game. So it's not like they have like a finished game and then they're just, you know, adding characters to it. Like, no, th this was definitely not like a complete game, what they're messing with right here. So don't, don't jump to the conclusion that like, yeah, they have a done game right here and now they're just changing it and making it maybe look worse. Some people do think the new graphics look a little worse. I'm not so sold. I think this does look very good, but like it's a little overly realistic, I would say. I think the, the new style, which we're gonna see in a second, fits League of Legends a little bit better, but uh, let's go ahead and get to that so I don't have to talk about it ahead of time. Okay, so here you can see the new art style. Personally, I think it works really well. Personally, I think they look like League of Legends characters. I think they look like they do in the game, just obviously very scaled up and more detailed. So I think it looks great. Let me know what you think. Did you like the 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 less sort of outlined cartoony look before? Or do you like the way it looks now? I will say the frame rate 
is a little weird in this gameplay. I don't know why. I don't know if just this is what they have, like they can't get it better yet because the game is still so early in development. Some people have theorized that they're actually playing the game in slow motion, so it's easier to see what's happening. Uh, but I'm not sure. The frame rate is a little bad though, but I'm sure the final game is going to be 60 FPS, but it looks a little bit chunky to me. But the gameplay does look kind of sick. Let, let's talk about some of the things we see here. So you guys think that was a double jump or that could be some sort of like command hop. I don't, he could have a special move that makes him hop. You see that he can change his jump trajectory. So we definitely don't know much about what universal options are available. Is there going to be double jump available? Hard to say. And then Jinx, it actually looks like she special cancels with a jump. Like wa watch this. She she hits with this crouching kick. And then to me, it looks like she special cancels into a jump. So this is some kind of special move or command move where instead of just doing a move and then jumping, she's special canceling into it so that she can apply pressure. Which looks pretty cool. And then again to go backwards. And then this is what's really exciting, guys, is assists, man. It's going to be an assist fighter. I think that is an absolutely brilliant direction to take the game in. I'm going to talk a little bit more about it later. But largely, just to head things off, this is going to be a pretty simplified fighting game in terms of inputs. They're going to talk a lot more about that. So I think it's smart that when a game is meant to be really accessible, easy to pick up for new players who aren't fighting game experts, I think adding that extra layer of depth by having two characters and assist to call is a brilliant idea. But I'm really, really excited that this is going to be a 2v2 assist game. And we'll talk about that more when we get to it. But yeah, you can see comboing off the Ari assist there. There we have a launcher into a tag. You guys see that? He launches and then we get the camera zoom in and tag. So to me, this is like Street Fighter Cross Tekken, right? Street Fighter Cross Tekken literally has this exact mechanic where you can cancel your launcher into tag and then the second character comes in dragon ball fighters lets you do this as well by like manually tagging so it remains to be seen if this is a universal mechanic where launcher can transition into a tag automatically or if it's one of those things where like you can just tag pretty fast during attacks so maybe he's just doing a launcher and then tagging right after so we'll have to see but here ari gets the combo look at this Woo! Woo! So we don't know exactly how the air combo system is going to work, but I would have to guess there's going to be some kind of hit stun decay, similar to something like Marvel vs. Capcom 3, where the longer you're being juggled, the less sort of time they have to keep juggling you. So you can get some hits early on, but then eventually uh, the combo is going to have to end. That would be my Project assumption. We'll be an assist based fighter. You'll build and pilot a team of two different champs. We feel like this is the right foundation Ooh. to build a game. Comboing into the grenade like that was so sick. On top of strong and by the way another thing worth noting we've seen two assists from Ari now so here Ari does an air projectile assist and then here earlier in the video she does sort of like a horizontal like dashing assist so it's clear that there's not just gonna be one assist per character it's definitely gonna remain to be seen is this gonna be a thing like Marvel vs. Capcom, or like what happened later with Dragon Ball Fighters, they patched in multiple assists where you pick a character and then there's three options for your assist and you pick an assist. Or is it going to be more like something like Blaze Blue Tag Battle, where every character has multiple assists and depending on either maybe the button you press to do the assist or like if you press a direction plus assist, it uses different assists. Personally, I think that's more likely to be the direction they go because for one thing, this game has simplified inputs. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of moves that are input with like direction plus button, like down plus special is going to be different than up plus special or forward plus special. So it makes sense if like down plus assist did a low assist and then like forward plus assist maybe did a, a forward dashing assist. I think that would make sense. And also I think for new players it can be a little daunting if you're already having to pick multiple characters and you have to pick assists the first time you open the game you don't know what that does you just get confused so i think having to pick assists for your characters even though it can add some customization aspects it's fun to be like oh what's the best assist that helps my team it also can be a little bit confusing and daunting and i think if it's possible to make it work this way where you always have access to multiple assists for your second character i think that would make a lot of sense so that would be my assumption on what's going to happen 
but obviously we don't know for sure just yet. Flight decision making on top of strong fighting fundamentals. Oh, and by the way, there we see him do the same launcher he did before, except this time there's no tag. So again, it's possible that if you just do launcher and then you press tag, they'll come in and combo off it. Or it could be like cross Tekken where if you press launcher and then you like double tap it, you'll tag. So something like that, but clearly you can launch solo. It's not like tagging is tied to the launcher. So it's definitely confirmed that you can just do normal launcher into air combo and not have to worry about tagging if you don't want to. Our goal is to build a game that delivers a fast pace. Oh, the Oki Zeme. Oh, we love to see it. So, you know, obviously we don't know if this is a cross up, but why would they show it if it wasn't right? So games like Dragon Ball Fighters, in order to make mix-ups a little bit weaker, make it easier to defend against the opponent, they make it so you can't really do stuff like this. The way fighting games work, if you don't know, is you always block the direction of the point character. So even if the projectile is hitting you on the left, as long as the character is on the right, that's kind of the direction that you have to block around. So it seems like they're letting you do cross-ups like this. And in a game with assists, in Marvel vs. Capcom, you call your assist and you jump over them at the same time. And that's a cross-up. That's a 50-50, essentially. They have to guess which side you're going to be on when the assist hits. So in a game with assists, you can do some very potent mix-ups with cross-ups. Again, games like Dragon Ball Fighters, you can't cross up that way. They have cross-up protection. You'll automatically block it the correct way. So you can't get mixed up like that in that game. But this game, I have to imagine they're going to let you do cross-ups like that. Because why else would they show it? And also, you know, it seems like they kind of are inspired by games like Marvel vs. Capcom. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite is a big one. And mix-ups are really, really crazy in that game. So I'm anticipating that there's going to be some potent cross-up mix-ups with projectiles and with assists in this game. So that's very hype as well. Dynamic combat fantasy while leaving plenty of room for you to be creative and express yourself in gameplay. Ooh, I love that cross-up setup. And by the way, we can see some sort of like chain slash Gatling system here. So he does sort of a, a two-piece <laughs> chain here. This could be like like you press the same button twice and it chains. We'll have to see. But it looks like a standing light. And then like down medium two hits. And then down heavy. And then he calls the assist. Dash up. And it looks like he gets momentum from the dash jump. So that's what allows him to get this beefy cross up. I love this normal. It looks so cool. So I'm guessing it's going to be like a Marvel vs. Capcom 3 slash Guilty Gear system where you can work up the chain light to heavy. It seems like there's going to be three attack buttons, one, two, and three. And you can go from one to two to three and it will all sort of chain together intuitively. So that's what it seems like so far from what we've seen. But we'll talk a little bit more about the inputs later like a lot of you out there. Oof. and then that was definitely like a special cancel right so it kind of looks like 5b or like 5 medium standing medium crouching medium like a lot standing heavy cancel into a special move i'm guessing this is a special move because it has this red aura it looks just like a little more special it doesn't look like it's just another normal move so that's my assumption so again like marvel and dragon ball fighters work the exact same way you can do standing medium, crouching medium, or the other order, but then you have to work up to your heavy normal, and then you can cancel into a special. So that's what it looks like to me in terms of the combo system. Uh, here's another thing real quick that is very easy to miss is Ari does a parry. Check this out. She, she dashes up, and then she's got shields out. And, you know, whatever Darius is trying to hit her with, it gets parried. And she gets to even dash up a little bit and then get a combo after. Uh, also, this red slash thing seems to kind of be like a universal hit spark mechanic, meaning they're trying to signal something to you, the player, when you see this red spark. I've seen people theorize that it means counter hit, like you're interrupting the opponent out of a move. Or it could mean like punish, like you're punishing a move and they want to they want to communicate that information to you with this red slash. I'm not sure how that would apply in this situation because he just got countered, so he can't do anything. So I'm not sure why the red slash would happen, but maybe getting countered by her parry puts you into a counter hit state. And that way you could get more damage and a better combo after. That would kind of make sense. But it seems like certain moves throughout the trailer, I'm not going to stop and point them all out, but you can see certain moves throughout the trailer are going to trigger this big red slash thing. So I think something is happening there. There's something that they're kind of trying to subtly communicate when you see this big red slash. 
hard reads and 200 IQ. Now it definitely seems like ground bounces and wall bounces are going to be a thing in this game. Uh, definitely reminds me of Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Marvel vs. Capcom 3, you get one ground bounce per combo. So it kind of seems like maybe this could work the same way. It's a way that you can extend your combos, but you can't do infinites because if you try to do multiple, it just doesn't work. So she gets a ground bounce into the combo, into the juggle. The dream for us. Ooh, that is so cool. And I, her mechanic here, we don't get to see too much about how this sort of air fireball mechanic works. But if you watch, when she throws the fireball, it leaves this orb on screen. So I'm not sure if maybe she'll be like Parasol from Skullgirls, where she can leave projectiles on the screen and activate them later, maybe make them explode. Or if it's the type of thing where like this just has a hitbox and if it hits you on the way, you know, you're not necessarily going to get hit by this. But if it doesn't hit you, it's just going to be a lurking hitbox in the air that she can control space with. So we don't get to see in too much detail how this little fire mechanic thing is going to work, but it looks very, very cool. And then OTG combo into Super. So Dragon Ball Fighters is another game where if they're in sort of that on the ground state, OTG, you can hit them on the ground with Super attacks specifically. Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom, the OTG system is a little bit different. Certain attacks can hit OTG. It kind of depends on the attack. But it looks like in this, maybe it's similar to Dragon Ball where if they're in that sort of knockdown state, you can hit them on the ground with a Super. Now let's talk about controls. I know that a lot of you have strong opinions about mechanical difficulty in fighting games. For Project L, we're embracing the easy to learn, hard to master mentality. So we're, we're seeing, you know, the attack buttons here. They only show one special button, right? Yeah, they've only shown special one and then presumably attack one through attack three. And then it looks like direction plus special will get you different special moves. This has definitely been a point of contention for a lot of people. Maybe I'm treading into hot take territory here. Personally, I think it makes a lot of sense for a few reasons. The first reason is this is a team game. This is an assist game. A lot of the big stumbling block for learning team games, one of the reasons why I think a game like Marvel vs. Capcom, like, yeah, they've been big in the competitive community, but they've never really achieved that level of hugeness on the level of something like Tekken or Smash Brothers or Mortal Kombat. I think the reason is because it's just very daunting to have to learn a team of characters. But if you know that your special moves are going to be done by pressing the special button or the down plus special button or the back plus special button, I think that's just easier for people. You can pick any character and you'll know all their moves without having to look up a move list. So I think that makes a lot of sense. So that's one thing. Uh, and also, if we're worried about like, oh, they're removing all the depth, they're removing all the depth by making the moves easy. Like, I don't really think so. Uh, yes, having single button special move inputs does have a real impact on gameplay. It means stuff like you can do dragon punches out of blocking, which normally you can't do. Normally, to do a dragon punch, you have to press forward, which means you have to stop blocking for a few frames. There's also stuff like there's moves like spinning pile driver. Spinning pile driver is done with a 360 motion, and spinning pile driver is allowed to be an extremely powerful broken move because it's balanced by the fact that you have to do a 360 motion. So doing stuff like walking forward and then do a spinning pile driver takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of frames to do the input. So you can't necessarily just instantly do a pile driver whenever you want. So yes, they can balance it. They can make the move worse to account for the fact that you do it with one button, but having different special move motions opens up the design space a lot. You can make moves that are extremely powerful and then they're balanced by the fact that their special move motion is a little harder to do. It takes more time to do. You can only do it in certain situations. You can't do it while doing certain things like the case of you can't dragon punch while also holding back. So there are trade-offs there in terms of the complexity of the game. But I think for a team game with assists, assists add an unimaginable amount of complexity to a game. Assists are one of the most complex mechanics in fighting games in terms of what they allow. You can use them for combos. You can use them for mix-ups. You can use them for block string pressure. You have to find the right assist for certain situations. You have to find the right teammates to match with your team. So assists add an absolutely ridiculous amount of complexity. So I think it's a good balance to have the moves be easy to do and simple and you don't have to remember inputs. But then if you really want to get nitty gritty and figure out the really dirty stuff in the game and you really want to optimize your gameplay, you can do that using the assist system. So that's kind of where my mind is with it. And also one more reason I think it makes sense. I've been talking about this for a long time, but another reason why I think one button specials makes sense is because in League of Legends, 
you press one button to do your move, right? Like if you want to use your Q skill, you press Q. So I think intuitively it fits the feel of League of Legends and it fits sort of the theming. So yes, I do think like Dragon Ball Fighters is like a perfect uh, sort of compromise. Dragon Ball Fighters has special move motions, but they're pretty much all fireball motions, either forward or backward. So I think Dragon Ball Fighters was a really good compromise because you don't really have to look up a move list. You just do fireball plus special and see what that does. And you do fireball plus light attack and you see what that does. So I thought that was a good compromise, but I think this will probably be fine as well. Uh, you know, I, it's, it's not my favorite to have one button specials. Like I said, I do think it removes something from the game, uh, but I don't think it's going to like ruin the game or anything. And I think if you're worried that this is going to be too easy, too baby mode, it's not going to be a real fighting game. I don't think you have to worry about that at all. I think the complexity is really, really going to be there. It's just not going to be there in terms of doing your special moves. So yes, we are making it easier to jump in with a new character and learn their basic kit. That said, we absolutely believe in rewarding the time you spend going deep on a character, and providing opportunities for you to showcase your high Okay, now this this is probably the best part of the trailer for me. Watch this com I'm going to stop this combo and we're going to explain everything that happens, okay? So this is a cross up obviously. You have to switch your block to block this correctly. And then if we watch the way he hits, this is what's called a deep cross up. He hit deep, meaning very, very low to the ground. So he's going to get extra hit stun off this, which means he has more time to combo into the next attack. So what he does is he combos into a very slow attack. I don't know what this is, like forward plus heavy, or maybe it's a special move, who knows. But he uses a very, very slow attack here, combos into it, and this attack causes stagger. So the only reason he was able to combo into this is because of the deep cross-up. But now he gets a stagger so he can dash up and combo off that. And it's possible that they're kind of cheating. It's possible this isn't a combo. You know, it, th this this could have uncomboed right here. It even kind of looks like he goes to neutral for a second, but we can't say for sure. So it's possible this is not a real combo. But let's assume that it is because I don't know if they would really show it if they were faking it, right? So then he combos into the stagger. Dash up. And do you think this is a dash cancel? Hard to say. Or maybe this move automatically dash cancels. But either way, he dashes up. And because he got the stagger, now he can combo into another slow move. This looks like maybe a charged launcher. Or maybe his launcher is just slow to come out. Who's to say? But then he air combos into a wall bounce. So I'm guessing he's used up his one wall bounce. I, I would have to assume you only get one wall bounce per combo. So he used it to wall bounce right there. And then he combos into this special move, which ground bounces. So now he uses up his ground bounce. And then he combos into that special move that we saw earlier, which it looks like it causes some sort of like rolling, sliding, like reeling knockdown state. So I'm guessing that this is not a true OTG situation. I'm guessing this is sort of like a, a like rolling hit stun which does exist in a few games. And then he called Jinx Rocket, which is going to come in and combo him off of the rolling hit stun. And then he jumps in, re-stands. Re-stand is a very, very dangerous mechanic. Any fighting game where you can take a juggled opponent and stand them back on their feet, that is a very powerful and dangerous mechanic. And lots of broken stuff comes from Restand. So I'm not sure if it's going to be a common thing or if it's just a Darius exclusive thing because it kind of matches like the way you would expect Darius to play. Lesser skilled players. And then he combos. It looks like medium attack, heavy attack, straight into you super. Set that aspirational summit. And, and there we see the super. And I do like, by the way, we see just a little bit of supers so far. I like that the supers, even though they do zoom in and they do have like a cutscene that plays when you hit them, they're not overly long. I really hate when you play a fighting game and you land a super and you have to watch like 15 seconds of like an anime cutscene. That drives me crazy. So I'm glad that even though they are sort of spectacles, they are like zooming and stuff. It, it's nice and short. But let's just watch this whole combo again. I'm not going to pause it, but man, this is mind blowing stuff. So if you you were worried that this game was going to be baby mode and this game was not going to have swag and it was not going to have cool combos. I think it's definitely going to have cool combos. This isn't about building a game where new players have a chance to be the pros. It's about unlocking the fun at all skill levels. And here we see the models a little bit. I think the models look great. Honestly, like, yeah, they don't look like Guilty Gear Strive or anything. They're not on that level, but they... They look great to me. They look like League characters. I think that's the... They match the look and feel of League. 
uh, while still having sort of the, the complexity and sort of high res factor that you would expect from a modern fighting game. So I think they look good. They're not like blowing my mind, but I think they look good overall. And they look like you would sort of imagine the characters to look when you're playing League if they were like blown up to full screen size. That give you the freedom to play your character your way. As an example, I'm thrilled to introduce you to Echo. Re-envisioned for Project L. Okay, so now we're going to go in-depth on just Echo's move list here. So, uh, I don't know anything about this guy. I played League, but I quit playing before this character came out. So, I don't know too much about him, but his moveset Echo's looks really genius. cool here. He's a brilliant inventor who, through time... Oh, by the way, I've seen some people say... Echo's some people say that there was wave dashing here. He's a I'm not so convinced. If I had to guess... I would assume that the game just allows you to cancel dash recovery into dash. There's a few games that work like this. I think Power Rangers Battle for the Grid works like this. There's a few games that work like this. Usually to wave dash in a 2D fighting game, you have to use some kind of trick. Like you cancel a dash into crouch and then you cancel the crouch into dash. Or in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, you can do what's called plink dashing, where you cancel a dash into a button, but you cancel the first frames of that button into another dash. So usually you have to do some kind of trick but I would have to imagine for a game like this where they want it to be easy to pick up, you can probably just repeatedly dash quickly and it just works. I don't think you have to do any kind of trick to wave dash in this game. And yeah, that that was an air dash, right? Air dash? Echo is a punk genius. He's a brilliant inventor who... I guess not air dash, but like a double jump. We saw him do this right at the beginning, right? He has sort of like a, like a air command hop. It kind of reminds me of Undernight Inbirth a little bit where you have like a short hop that you can do in the air. It remains to be seen if that's a universal mechanic or if that's just him. I have to imagine it's just him because, like, there's no way Darius can do that, right? That doesn't make any sense. So that's my assumption. Time manipulation can rewind his own mistakes and stay one step ahead of his opponent. The centerpiece of... Yeah, so th this, is the, this is the this is the right. juicer mechanic it's here. Forward moving slash. Th this clone. This is the juicer mechanic. You put out the clone... And then for like a long time afterward, for like five seconds afterward, we'll see it a little bit later, you can warp back to the clone. Pretty good poke and a combo. Oh, that is cool. When Echo slashes with Chrono Strike, he generates an after image that he can rewind back to any time in the next few seconds of the match. So he says the next few seconds, it's longer than you would think. You can use the rewind to double down on your first slash and make a different choice. See, like, look, he left a pretty decent gap there before he teleported back, but I think he, he, he leaves an even bigger gap later on. And branch into high so you can definitely do some dirt with this. Oh, this is this is the stuff right here. Watch that. Make a different choice and branch into high. Put out the clone, jump over, hit them on the back, warp back to the front, hit them on the front, double cross up. Let's go. But he really comes online when you take full advantage. Oh my gosh! Roll to the back, then rewind to the back or to the front. Recover for assist attacks made by his teammates. So yeah, that's what I'm talking about with look how long the clone stays out here. Yeah, like that that stayed out for, I don't know, several seconds. So it seems like there's a lot of freedom there and a lot of cool stuff right that you could do. Rewind can also be a strong combo extender. And yeah, using the warp to extend the combos. Oh my and then gosh. Time Echo's time grenade. Time winder works great for basic zoning and combos. The real payoff comes when you're able to Ooh. pull Time Winder from range. Yeah, so this is another cool mechanic where the grenade slows them down if it hits late. Like, if you hit the grenade close to them, you're not going to get that slowdown into the combo. So that's another really cool mechanic. I'm sure something like this has been done in fighting games. I just can't think of an example where, like, the projectile starts out weak, but the longer it goes, it gets stronger. I'm sure something like that has been done, but it seems yeah, really, really cool. And explode into a time distortion field. Yeah, see now he gets the dash up into the full combo. The match. For both of these moves, our approach is to give you a tool with a clear primary role with lots of potential for extra utility when you use it. To Ooh, and then hitting it with the bat too. So again, like, yeah, the game is simple in the sense that this is all just done by pressing the special move button, right? <laughs> the game is simple in that sense. And yet there's so much that you can do with these moves. Like right? these moves have so many ways that they can be applied so i think that is just so smart the right situation now while gameplay is obviously super important high quality net code is essential for any great fighting game so this you, is you know you know they're today. they're trying to get on my good the side with this and walk you through some of our networking foundations net code has been a top of mind topic in the fgc for the past year especially since we haven't been able to gather for live events. Yes, that is extremely so true. Down, we've designed our entire networking stack to deliver the same highly responsive gameplay that you'd get playing offline. 
Of course, this starts by using rollback networking at the core. Rollback does a great job of maintaining a consistent low input delay across a wide range of pings. So I, I'm not going to explain rollback in this video because there's kind of a lot to explain. But like I said, Tony Cannon invented GGPO, which is one of the first and one of the biggest rollback networking solutions. And I'm going to go ahead and link a video by Core A Gaming where he explains rollback really, really well. If you're curious why rollback makes playing fighting games online better, that video should help explain it. We've also developed a new networking model that enhances the benefits of rollback with core technology developed by other games at Riot. We'll route network traffic between players through Riot Direct, our internal network already being used to minimize latency in League of Legends and Valorant. We're also actively managing a player's connection to their opponent to ensure a consistent, fair play experience. If their connection is laggy or drops packets, their experience will suffer, but yours won't. And if someone rage quits in the middle of the match, our netcode will determine who should win and who should be penalized. All right, so there's a lot to talk about here. So yeah, Riot Connect is already a thing that works on League. And I, I am not a network engineer. I'm not an expert, but my understanding is this. So normally when you're playing a game like League, the way it works is I connect to Riot's server. Everyone in the game connects to Riot's server. We send our data to the server. It sends stuff back, yada, yada, yada. And the problem is, you know, sometimes that's really far and it takes a while. So, uh, and you have to go across a bunch of different sort of checkpoints along the internet. The internet is not just one big straight line. It's a bunch of little connected points. But the way that Riot Connect works is they basically have their own hardware network. And instead of connecting all the way across all these little chain points to the League of Legends server, you connect to the closest Riot Connect server. And that has essentially a straight line. To the league server so you can get there a lot quicker and and with a lot less latency uh and so the idea here is i guess this is gonna be a dedicated server-based game they don't say that outright but most fighting games are peer-to-peer -peer, meaning like yeah you might use a server to match make and you might use a server for like your friends list but once you're in the game with the opponent it's only the two players it's just sending data directly back and forth which makes sense because that's less latency. If you have to send it to a server, which then goes to the other player and then goes to the server and back to you, that takes a longer time. Whereas the, you know, the shortest distance between the two players is just connecting them directly. So that's why almost every fighting game is direct peer-to-peer -peer and not on a dedicated server. But the way they're talking about this here, it has to be on a dedicated server, right? Because he says we manage the connection between the two players. And if one connection is bad, the other player doesn't feel it. Which, first of all, I don't really think that's possible. I think they're, you know, they're gussying it up. They're, they're making it sound, uh, you know, I'm sure there's something happening where, first of all, rollback does do a really good job of sort of hiding you from the opponent's lag. There's lots of times in rollback where if your opponent lags, but uh, you happen to be doing a combo to them or they happen to be blocking or they happen to be in hit stop or they uh, the prediction of rollback works correctly, meaning like they hold forward and then there's lag, but they were holding forward the whole time. You don't feel the lag at all. So rollback does a really good job of hiding problems with people's connections, which is one of the reasons why it's preferable to delay based netcode. But I don't really understand what this could mean in terms of one player feels lag, the other player doesn't. I don't really know if that's like a thing. You're going to see rollbacks, right? If your opponent lags, you're going to see rollbacks. There's no other way to do it. Uh, but we'll see what this means. I have to imagine this means that there's going to be a dedicated server. And that's also why they're able to effectively tell who disconnects. Sometimes in fighting games, it's actually hard to tell if someone rage quits. Because if you're connected peer to peer, you're not connected to any server. Someone disconnects. And then it's like, well, how do we tell who disconnected? The two players disconnected from each other, but how can we tell who's the one who sort of instigated it? It's kind of hard to tell. So a lot of fighting games do a very bad job of punishing rage quits, or they rely on players to report rage quitters to like moderators. They can't tell automatically. So assuming that we are connected to some kind of server and not just sort of connected to each other through this network. Assuming there's some kind of server, that makes it really easy to tell, right? Because you can just be like, oh, this guy's still connected to the server, and this guy's not anymore. So clearly this guy left, right? Uh, so yeah, I'm guessing we're going to be playing on dedicated servers. In my mind, that's the only way I can imagine this working. But if anyone has more detail, I would love to hear it. Or if we want to get direct clarification uh, from the canons, that would be amazing. So, uh, but yeah. Obviously, netcode is super, super important, and I know 
that these guys are going to kill it because, again, this is the creator of GGPO. They know how to make fighting games play really well online. So I have absolutely no doubt this is going to be a great online experience. We're taking Netplay very seriously for Project L. It's the primary way that we play test the game internally. And we're working every day to make sure it's in top shape for the eventual release. That's another good thing as well. Like, obviously, if you know your game is going to be played online, you should play test it online a lot, right? This seems so obvious. And yet, then I play some games like King of Fighters 15 open beta, and it's like, did they ever test this online? Because I look at my screen and it says zero frames of rollback. And then I look at my opponent's screen because they're streaming too. And it says 10 frames of rollback. So did they even... Okay, listen, I'm not going to get too off track. Yes, I know that's what betas are for is to find problems like that. But do they even test some of these games? I'm like, do they even play these online? Do they even see... Because we find the problems on day one. On Melty, when Melty Blood Type Lumina came out, we knew on day one that there were problems with the PC version. So it's like, did the developers know? Are they playing this online? So obviously you should play it online. So I'm glad, you know, even though it's obvious that they would say it, I'm glad that they said it because you should test it online. We hope you enjoyed the sneak peek at Project L. Before we go, I want to remind you that our game is still in R&D. We're happy with how core combat is shaping up, but there's still a ton of work to do. Thanks so much for your patience while we take our time to make sure that we get this right. So that's all for now. Last time we spoke, Project All went dark afterwards, but this time we'll do our best to keep in touch when we have major news to share. Thanks a lot. So yeah, they said uh, that there's gonna be two more updates in 2022. So first half of 2022, there's gonna be another update. And second half of 2022, there's gonna be another update. This wait is gonna be painful, man. And then if we're lucky, It'll be what, like spring 2023, we'll get the game if we're lucky, but more likely it'll be like late 2023 or 2024. Oh my God, this is painful to think about. I want to play the game now. I am honestly so excited, but I want to hear what you guys have to say as well. Uh, does the fact that this is sort of a simplified one button special game, does it really turn you off? Is the fact that it's a team game? Are you okay with that? I would love to hear what you guys think. Personally, uh, I couldn't be more thrilled and I can't wait to get my hands on it. Like, I'm not just saying this because, you know, people are like, oh, this game is going to have a lot of money behind it. It's going to be esports. So people want to people want to suck up and uh, and pump the game so that they can make more money. Like, no, I legitimately think that if anyone's going to be trusted with making a really good fighting game with really good online, uh, I think it's these guys, and I think that they're going to do a great job. So can't wait to get my hands on it, and uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. But that's going to be it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.